Now, table notes we've already mentioned can become very long, and I think they're very normal to have table notes. But we have different kinds of table notes. So let's take a quick look at the different kinds of table notes. We have general notes, specific notes, and probability notes. General notes often qualify, explain, or provide information, provide some more information to help the user understand something. So these are kind of like general ideas, letting me understand more about the table or why things are in the table or what they mean in the table. When you write a note, you begin with the word note, and it's italicized at this angle like this, note, and with a period at the end. No space before, but then you must have space after. So here's an example. You can see note. It's italicized, and there's a, a period and one space here. Factor loadings greater than 0.45 are shown in boldface. M, which is the mean, equals match process. Well, in this case, M means match process. Sorry, not mean. And N equals non-match process. So that's telling us inside the table, I have two abbreviations, M and N, and they mean these things. And here, I have a period with a space, and then I begin this section here, and I use a semicolon, which is okay because it's like two separate parts, but we put them together and put a period at the end. That's okay. That works out fine. Specific notes are indicated by superscript in lowercase letter, and superscript meaning that you put it up inside your table like this here. So 34.5 in that little A up there, or 12.8 in that little B up there, or here we have a little dash and then a C. What does this dash mean? Why is this data empty? And so then we look at the bottom of the table where the note is, and down at the note we're going to say, what does A mean? What does B mean? What does C mean? We put all of that into the note. Another great way to save a lot of space in your table. Order notes across the table from left to right, and that is to say that when you're making your table, your table kind of has a square form, doesn't it? So it's kind of like a box, right? And so you probably want to begin with your A up here, and then you want to have your B, and then your C, and then your D notes, something like this. So order notes across the table from top left to right. And then probably if you have another row, if you have more notes, then C, and then D, and then E. So you're kind of moving down that way, making your notes. Table footnotes can show specific notes listed by a letter. So again, we can have them listed down at the bottom of the table. You can have your note. You can say something. But then you can also say A and then B. What are these things separately? And that's the table footnote. So for example, here we have A is actually N equals 25 is a note, and then B, the participant did not complete the trials. So those are the little footnotes we can add. What about probability notes? Probability notes, of course, are your P is bigger than, or your P is uh, some kind of probability 0 0.01, 0 0.001, something like this. So of course, in statistics, we use this all of the time, and this is called your probability note. And this goes at the bottom of the table. Now, the best way to do this is here, P equals, and then put the exact probability. Now, actually, researchers don't do this very much for some reason. And a lot of students don't do this very much. They run their software, they run something like SPSS, and they just quickly say, well, the probability is less than 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 or 0 0.05, something like this, because that's what they set the probability at inside the test. But you know, that is not the way we should be reporting probability. We should be reporting it as the exact number. So APA recommends the exact number. If you have a graphic, a figure, or you have many probabilities, that is two, you know, more than just a few, many, then in that case you can go ahead and use the P less than 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, because that makes it easier to understand. If you have too many of these probabilities listed on the page, it becomes hard to understand. Or if you're using a picture or a figure, you just can go ahead and use the simple notation. 
So for example, you could say inside your table, star, 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 star asterisk, that's called. And then down in the probability note, you would say one star equals 0 0.05, two star, three star. You can indicate also whether it's a one-sided test, a tailed test, or a two-tailed test. And you would do something like this, where you have the probability listed, but then you also indicate, is this a two-tailed or a one-tailed test, which of course makes the test results uh, quite different. And then here we have another example. And so these little symbols here, these are going to be inside your table, and they're going to be showing some kind of, there's going to be a number, maybe it was 0.75, something like this. And this number here is representing a 0.01 probability of a one-tailed test. Okay, how about ordering notes? Well, the way you order notes, because you can have many notes, as you saw that last example really had a ton of notes. How do you put notes together? Well, you can order them in this way. General goes first, specific goes next, and probability goes last. So that would look something like this. A general note, and then a specific note, and then your probability note. So that's keeping it nice and simple. And you can see that very quickly. If you look at a table, you look at the notes, you look at the bottom of the notes, you can see the P values, the probability values, because they go last. So how can you use notes to save space? Here's an example. On the left side, we have this group, and then N, anxious, depressed, control, 15, 15, 15. And of course, hmm, this is interesting. We have the N, which means subgroup, right? So the total N is actually 15 times 3. That's the total group, the total sample size. So we've broken them into three subgroups, so we use N. But they're the same. So why not make the table smaller? How? Just say group. What is a group? Make a note. In this case, A is N equals 15, 15 people inside the subgroup. It's a really great example of how to save space. A lot of space saved. Basically, you have a whole extra column cut off of the table. All right, now, that's a lot to kind of input. These tables can get very complicated, very hard, very fast. Let's go through a checklist of what should you do when you're making a table to check that you've done things correctly. First of all, is the table necessary? Does it really help to understand the data? Supplement file, maybe. That is, can you maybe add other information that you don't need to put into a table that can go into an appendix or somewhere else. So if you're, especially if you're doing a thesis, I think I see students do this a lot. They have all this data and they put it right into the middle of the thesis. This makes reading it very hard. Actually, this would probably go inside of an appendix or actually supplemental information. When we're publishing papers with a journal, we can have large amounts of information, of data, and we don't want to put it inside the paper because there's limited space. And we can actually have a a web link, an internet link that picks up the paper, or the journal publisher can have supplemental files where they can get more. Often for my papers, I include videos, but you can't put a video inside the paper, so it's supplemental material. There's a link at the publisher where users can go and see the video. Consistent presentation. Do all your tables have the same kind of look and feel? Do they have the same kind of design? Are they consistent? Do they use the same kind of capitalization? Do they use the same kind of decimal point uh, placement, the same kind of statistical power? Are they all consistent? Is the title of your table brief and clear? Does every column have a column heading? Are the abbreviations uh, explain, that is anything that's abbreviated, do you explain it well? Do your notes have an order, that is, do they come general, specific, probability, that's the order they should be in. Did you follow that order? And you should have no vertical lines, that is, inside the table, you should not have vertical lines. You do have some horizontal lines, but it's just at the top and at the bottom of the page, uh, of the table not everywhere in the table, and no vertical lines, no vertical lines. Is credit given 
or acknowledgement given or did you get permission for anything that's being reused from somebody else? And is the table referred to inside the text? That means in your thesis, inside your paper, did you actually mention the table? See table one or see table two. If you don't mention it, then you've got to cut the table. You can't have it because you need to mention it.